Hello and welcome to this short video of about nesting widgets so that you can have more control over how menus look. Now um, this is a relatively straightforward uh, example. What I have is I have HUD here which at runtime is just going to be attached to the screen in the, in the, in the left hand side here. So nothing particularly complicated and I've got that just by adding this code onto the level blueprint, just for simplicity. Okay, now I have this HUD, which is a canvas panel with a vertical box where we're gonna place our menus in. Now, standardly, if you wanted to have a lot of buttons in your menu, you might drag lots of buttons in and then you might add text to these buttons and then you would format them accordingly. You might even duplicate the buttons in here to make it quicker. Now, this is fine uh, and this would work. However, um, it, it makes it a little bit harder if you want to change things as, as time's going on. So, uh, say you want to make a change to a style of a button and there are a hundred buttons in a hundred menus and you uh, want them animate in different ways and stuff like that. This can be uh, not particularly scalable. So um, what I'd like to demonstrate is the simplest way of just to create a template for a button so that you would be able to then alter everything just in one simple singular place. And, uh, and then spread it out over hundreds and hundreds of menus. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new widget. So I'm gonna come in and under user interface, I am gonna create a widget blueprint. And I'm gonna call this main menu button. Okay, so this is the button that I would use for the main menu. Now, um, we have our button. Usually, most people will be used to starting with a canvas panel. However, I'm going to start with a size box. Now, uh, I'll drag this size box into the screen. And a size box is going to give us some control over um, how big the container is. So, I like it as a starting point, uh, but uh, other people might do this in other ways. So, I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a width override. Uh, and I'm going to make my button 300 wide and I'm going to make it 100 high. And I'm going to want to see how this looks. And because this will not conform to the size that it is, I'm just going to come up and change it to a custom. And in the top here, I will change it to 300 and 100. So I know that is the rough size that the box is going to appear when it is dropped into a, a, a slot somewhere. Now, um, these are just suggestions. Depending on how you want to format things, you can do it quite differently. So the next thing we want is a button. So I will now drag my button into, the level, into my size box. Now I want some padding, so I'm going to put eight padding around the outside so it's a little bit smaller than the size box. And I am going to, uh, and I'm going to, ch I'm going to change the padding so it's eight at the sides, but it is so at the top and the bottom. I'm going to make it only four, and the reason for that is when you stack them on top of each other, they'll have the same distance between them as they would at the sides. Just, just a preference, really. But so that is my button. Next thing I need is some text. So I will grab text and I'll place it in the middle here. And that looks pretty good. Now I want my color to be different. So I'm going to go and change my text to um, black. Now already we are, we're pretty good now. We've got, we've got what a button looks like. And I can jump back into my HUD and I can search now. Now that it's saved, I can search for my main menu button. And I can drag those in. I can drag multiple in, and as you can see, now all of the buttons look the same. And compile, and I can see that they're consistent. If I make a change on one of them, I'll make a change on all of them. Now there is a couple of uh, a couple of things that are more difficult now. 
out. So the first thing is, once I jump in, I can no longer, I no longer have the events at the bottom here. So I've got no events. So how do I add an event to these? Well, if I go to the main menu button, I'll grab the button that it is here, and I am going to find the, so the button, I'll make this a variable. As soon as I make it a variable, you can see that we now have events as part of this button. So that's the is variable button up here. And I want to tie an event to on clicked. So if I push that, now this is on clicked. What I can do is I, I want to be able to access, when, I want something to subscribe to when this is kicked off within the parent class. And I can do that with an event dispatcher. So I'm going to push plus, and I'm going to put main menu button clicked. Okay, so now I have an event dispatcher. Just drag this in, drop it, and use call. And so all it's doing is it's calling this event. Now, if I jump back into my HUD on this button here, which is compile, and I just make sure I've saved, compile. So I jump back into my HUD, make this a variable, and you'll now see we have a event. So an event main, main menu button clicked. So I click on that. I can rename the button just like I would be able to uh, just like I would be able to if it was a standard button. Okay, so let's I put a print string on it, go back and we play. When I hit the top button, we get a hello, we get nothing on the other buttons. So, but again, if I want to get that menu up, all I need to do is on the HUD, all I need to do is grab any of the buttons, make them a variable. And I can now plug, I can I can grab the event from the the button that I've created. Now that's all good. However, what we don't have in the way of functionality is the ability to change the text. Because before we'd be able to change the text on the button. So let's fix that now. So I'm jumping into the designer and we have a text block. Now I'm going to make this a variable again, just so that I've got access to it in the graph. And what I'm going to do is I will come up to event preconstruct, grab my text box and go set text. And so we can set the text here. See that? And now if I right hand click, I can promote this to a variable. So this is the in text. And if I make this instance editable and compile. Now, if we go back to our HUD, you'll see all the text has disappeared. So one thing that's probably worth doing is giving this some kind of default value, like uh, I mean, you can do text again. And now you can see that there's got a value in it. However, if I come in here, in the settings, I've got in text. So I can change that to start or, and do the same for the other one, do quit and so on. So I've got a whole load of different choices of functionality. But what's, so, and you can do that with anything. If you want to change any of these settings, all you need to do is expose it and on set it on pre-construction. Now, um, now, I'm just going to make the example of show you how you can now run an animation. So if I was to add an animation in for this text, say I wanted to this text to grow and shrink, or when the button is hovered over, I can do that. All I need to do is select the button, create a new animation for um, a sort of scale up text, grab the text and I'm going to add in from the text block, I want to add in something else and the other thing that I am, 
So I, I've added in the text box and now I just want the transform. So we're looking for the transform and in that transform we've got scale. So this is the animation. This isn't really a course on animation so I'm hoping you sort of understand it but over half a second I want this to grow. So I'm going to start off with the default scale and then I will change the scale to 1.2 and 1.2. So if I was to see this animation it would just slightly grow the text and slightly shrink the text like that. Now if I compile um, I have my animation short as it is and I can play it in two directions so I can use it to increase the size and decrease the size. Now I need to run this animation and I want to run it based off of the button. So I'm selecting the button, I'm going to come down and I'm going to select on hovered and I'm also going to select on unhovered. Now the animation automatically a reference is created to it so I can drag this in and then all I need to do is play for, for play animation forward and play animation reverse plug one of those in and so the nice thing about this is now we've put all that together um, if I jump in and you can see here, oh, so I'll run it again. So as I hover over them, it automatically works on all of the buttons. And this changes for any settings. So that should basically go over how you can um, how you can expose an event and how you can expose a setting so that it can be altered. Uh, and that works for everything. You could do those for title tags, you could do them for all, all over the place. But in generally speaking, it, it's worth doing if you're working in some, some kind of game or something where this is going to happen a lot. Otherwise, you're going to be changing a lot of things on the fly. All right, thanks a lot. Bye.